called us welcome one and all back to the channel with us during this very interesting lockdown experience but we're using it for fun we're using it to do stuff that we've we've never really been able to do which is talk about different different topics and, and different things that I typically don't get a, a chance to talk about normally so this is our opportunity to talk about it. I'm also testing things out this time a little bit differently. Instead of streaming through the, a service that I normally use, which is Restream, I'm streaming directly from Streamlabs OBS. So I need to double check whether or not this is actually up and running. I'm going to do that right now just to ensure that everything is working as normal. This is, I, this is the first time that I've done this. It's not entirely easy for me to test this out prior. So let me just do that real quick and see where we are. It looks like we are live. Okay, cool, fantastic, very nice. Welcome everybody. I am watching chat as well for Facebook as well as YouTube. So feel free to comment below and let me know. However, what I, what I wanted to talk about today is how I, I edit videos. And it seems rather, I don't wanna say counterintuitive. Uh, it, there's a lot of, of videos out there helping you understand how to edit videos. This isn't going to be exactly the same style of video as those, which is to say that I'm, I'm not here, um, I feel like chat is not working, um, but I, I'm not here to tell you step by step exactly how I edit, that's, that's not the point of this. Instead, yeah, interesting, okay, uh, chat is not working for whatever reason, thank you AI Artemis for letting me know. Um, there's no notification for the stream until you went live. Okay, that's probably that's probably because of going directly live through through Streamlabs. So I will need to double check that in the future and figure out what is going on. However, back on topic, we are we are not approaching this topic in the in the sense of how exactly do I make videos, what program I use. I will talk about a little bit what program I use. Instead. I am deciding to out my secret, if you will, and I'm only doing that because either earlier this week or late last week, Linus from Linus Tech Tips basically made a video directly on my secret for, for how I, I've been editing all my videos from here on out. And uh, it's, it's time to just get over it and share it with the world. So, with that in mind, you all that are interested in editing videos, and you're like, oh, but I don't, I don't want to have to sit at a, a desktop PC in order to edit my videos. I want something with a little bit more freedom. You might say, oh, then I'm going to invest in an expensive laptop. I want to buy a Razer laptop or I don't know, whatever else people spend obnoxious amount of money on. And I'm here to tell you to stop doing that. Stop it. <laughs> Unless there's a, there are some, some rules that will come into play with this. However, if you are interested in editing videos and you're like, oh, I really want to edit 1080p 60 videos and, and my computer's just kind of lagging a little bit, or I want to edit 4K videos and I definitely don't have the compute power to edit that. If you want to understand more about compute power, I did a live stream on that last week. You should go back and, and double check that. However, what you should not be doing is investing a lot of money in a laptop so long as you understand what you're giving up when you do that and how much of an extra premium you're being charged in order to do that. So. With, with that in mind, today we are going to talk about a wonderful, wonderful idea and concept that is streaming your desktop. Streaming 
your desktop works exactly the same way as you are watching me right now. You are not looking at an uncompressed version data stream of my camera. You are watching a compressed encoded version of it and it's compressed all the way down so that it can be streamed out in a way that can actually work for you and your network so that you can have a, a decent watching experience and, and see. So, instead of investing a lot of money in a laptop, if you want the freedom or anything else like that, you should instead be looking at the option of buying and building your own desktop PC and then streaming it to a dummy device. I say dummy device because it, it can be any device that has internet access that is able to use uh, a program that I'm going to talk about in a moment. And you will also need a decent internet connection. I say decent, but I've, I've tested this out in a number of different ways. So I'll, I'll explain that more in the future. Um, just a couple couple comments coming through. Welcome, Percussion for Life, Fang, Gasha, Gotcha. Nightwings, Nerfworks, welcome, Pistachio Nerf. Wonderful to have you, Motor Monster. Thank you so much for being here, part of the stream. Let's learn about what I use to stream my desktop. I've been doing this for about two years now. This, I at, at first I thought that this would work best only under fiber optic networks. For instance, I have a fiber optic network here at the gym. The, the actual speeds that we have here, I believe are 100 megabits down and 25 megabits up. At my house, my house has significantly greater internet, even though it's the same provider, they like drop, they charge businesses so much money. However, I love them. They're so nice because they're a small startup business and I'm not funding Spectrum. That makes me feel really good. However, they they give me at the house for less than a third of what we pay for it here. We get 500 megabits down at my house and 100 megabits up. That's insane, right? So the internet speed is, is a little bit of a factor here. With that said though, I've been able to do this at Starbucks and I've been able to edit videos at Starbucks using my desktop PC. And I do that by using programs that help me stream my desktop to my laptop. For my laptop, I'm using an, an old Surface Pro 4. And when I bought it new, it was like maybe $1,000. Uh, but it, at this point in time, it is almost five years old. And you can just as easily do what I'm, I'm going to explain on a Chromebook if you so chose. My desktop PC is a Ryzen 7 2700X. The graphics card is nothing to write home about. It is, it is an NVIDIA 1050 Ti. It, it, I bought it for $150 maybe two years ago. It is not terribly expensive. Altogether, my PC rig might have been, might have been just under $700, which is pretty good. That's that's decent. That that's cheaper than what I bought my Surface for. And my Surface, even though I sort of was able to get a, like I, I did a, a little bit of video editing on it for a while, uh, at the beginning of the channel when when I wasn't doing that much intensive editing projects on it. However, editing is so taxing on your CPU and your GPU if you have one that doing it on the laptop, laptop would get super hot. If I was uh, editing videos on, on the road, if I, were, if I were you know at Starbucks or anything else like that, or if I wasn't able to plug my computer in, it was only a matter of time before it would die because it uses so much power in order to generate everything. So again, what I've been doing instead is streaming my PC to my Surface Pro 4. There are a couple different service, uh, services that you can use for this. I'm gonna switch to my display capture so that you can, oh, actually I'm gonna bring this over real quick. I'm gonna bring up uh, the main service that I use that specifically Linus talked about in, in his most recent video is a program called Parsec. And if you've never seen it, let me get y'all in. 
I'm gonna bring in my desktop capture. I'll switch that over and we'll go on over. This is Parsec. And Parsec was originally intended as a way of allowing you to play games with friends. Um, and you know what I'm even gonna do, let's do this. I'm gonna bring this here and then I'm going to bring me down. Check this out. Hey. <laughs> uh, so this, this is Parsec. It is a free program. It's free. It blows my mind that this is free. Uh, but you can you can download uh, you can download this for Windows. You can download it for OS X, I believe. Let's find out. Um, and it also works on Android. I think it actually also works on all mobile devices. Tell me where. Okay, I don't know for sure whether or not it works on, on iPhone. However, I do have it on my Android device uh, and I can literally stream my desktop to my phone if, if I so chose. But the amazing thing about this is just how easy it is. When you run Parsec, you'll have to run it and download it on your host computer as well as your client computer. In this case, the host would be my desktop PC and the client would be my Surface Pro 4. When you set all of that up, uh, what you'll see is this screen. And this is my host. I'm able to switch around and change out all of the, the, uh, the settings for this. I can change whether or not the hosting is enabled or disabled on this computer. I can change the host name if I so chose. Uh, I can change the resolution. So if you want to conserve bandwidth so you're not using as much, if you are streaming uh, at Starbucks, for instance, as I explained before, you could turn the resolution down so that it's not as straining. You can change your bandwidth limit. If you have the bandwidth to do it, you can go all the way up to 50 megabits a second. I found that 15 megabits a second is perfectly fine. And also here, I don't even have the available bandwidth for 50 megabits per second. I do at the house though, uh, and it, it, it does work. Um, and and once you get that set up, you are able to go over to your client device and access it, and it works remarkably well. There have been times in the past where this has not worked very well, and instead of using Parsec, let's say if I just need to do something quickly, I need to make a change and I'm on the fly, I don't even have my service with me, I can do stuff from my phone, and the program that I've been using for that is actually, oh, that was it, Remote Desktop from Google. This is actually a, a pretty incredible service as well, also free, but the cool thing about having it on your phone is that your phone's touch screen will work as the mouse cursor, and there are gestures for how to move the mouse around, how to click, how to double click, how to scroll up and down web pages. Um, but yeah, you can, I mean, I can't access this computer remotely. I'm literally using it right now. Um, but you can, Nissan Versa, that's this one. Uh, but this is my computer at home. I'm not gonna click it because my wife might be on her computer. And if I were to do that, then it would be very weird for her <laughs> because the mouse would just start moving <laughs> on its own, which is a little a little funny as well to, to see. Uh, but both of these programs are free. I've also, because I have an NVIDIA, graphics card, there's another program called Moonlight that I've used in the past, but these, all these programs are exactly the same. All they're doing is streaming your desktop to a client device. I am going to attempt this on screen. Let me bring y'all back. Turn this off. Let's put this up to fit screen and switch over. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna attempt this real quick as I turn the camera this way, because over here, I've got my surface. I'll show you. Okay. And I put my surface hooked up to my encoder. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can get this to work. <laughs> I'm gonna see if it, this may have, because my, my computer did turn off Unfortunately, I forgot to turn the, the screensaver off, so it's possible. Oh no, there it is, cool. 
I'm gonna bring that over. I'm gonna switch over this way and bring you this way. Okay. So, this is my surface. And maybe, can you see the cursor? I don't necessarily know. The, the delay on it is a little great, but keep in mind, this is not the place to do this. I have a ton of available bandwidth at my house, but I, my, my PC is not at the house. We've been doing a lot of streaming on the Rochester Parkour site for all of our online classes. Hey, Jonathan Lowry, one of our instructors. Uh, however, so I've got my PC working as an encoder right now. It's literally streaming data out and, and dropping my available bandwidth. I'm also streaming with my encoder, which is using up a little bit of bandwidth. I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see how this goes. Regardless, again, I, I'm not even using the like the keyboard on my Surface. I literally have like a $20 Bluetooth keyboard because my four-year-old, five-year-old uh, keyboard doesn't really function that much anymore. However, this is my screen. Uh, I can bring up Windows if it. Oh, I gotta turn my keyboard on. And if I go to Parsec, I'm going to connect. This is my client device. Oh, uh-oh. I wonder if I just destroyed the audio. Uh-oh. Did I destroy audio? Uh-oh. Weird. Did I just destroy the audio? If somebody could tell me in chat, that would be great. Because when you when you access your host computer, all of its outputs get redirected to the device that you're accessing it with. And in this case, I was accessing it through my, my laptop and my headphones are plugged in through my PC. How can I test that? Somebody tell me in chat what what was what was happening? Uh, if the audio is functioning, and you can still hear my microphone, that would be great because I would love to also be able. You can hear me fine. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go back in. I I am now on my desktop PC. That's that's what I'm seeing right here. This is the desktop PC. Okay, looking at it. And I'm going to switch things over to uh, display capture. And then video capture is now going to go all the way down there. Wow, this is so laggy. Oh my god. <laughs> this is, it's chugging along right now. <laughs> Transition. Okay. So accessing fantastic uh again i don't know entirely how this is going and I've, this is starting to break my brain just a little bit streaming on one computer and trying to access it at the same time so if by all means if if things start going a little wonky just let me know in chat i'll, I'll do my best i've been using another free program to uh, to edit, although I am using the studio version of this. However, the free version is absolutely incredible. It's called DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is an incredible, uh, incredible editing platform from Blackmagic Design. They make really great cameras. I've been using, they also have developed this amazing editing platform and it is so good. I, I used to use Adobe Premiere Pro for all of my editing and I, I, I paid for it and I, I sort of liked it. It was definitely a great program. Was it worth it? Uh, I don't know. Because at that point in time, I think I was paying for the privilege of using it. It was 20 bucks a month, almost 20 bucks a month because it gets bundled in with all the other services that you need. That's a, that's a chunk of change. That is $240 a year and if you like the features, if you like the features on this and you decide, hey, I want to upgrade to the studio version, the studio version is $300. Is that a hefty price tag? Yes. However, it pays for itself in about 14 months to 15 months. That's not bad when you consider 
it's a one-time payment, and then from there you get free updates for life afterward. But this is this is my my editing platform. Uh, let's go all the way back to a an edit. I don't even know if I posted this one, um, but this is my my editor, and I'm able to access it. Uh, I'm just gonna go in real quick and double check. Nobody said anything in chat, so everything should be fine. Go back and. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of different things that you can do with the, the program. Again, I'm not talking about exactly how I edit. That's not the point of this. I just want you all to understand that I've invested in hardware in a PC, and I've created a system that allows me to remotely log into it almost without fail. There have been a couple times where I will say that obviously the, the, the worst situation that you could have is for your host PC to somehow turn off or restart. And if you're not physically in its own location, for instance, I've been leaving my PC at the gym because I just, I, I don't wanna lug it around. We've been using it to stream. I don't have to lug it back and forth from the house and the gym whenever we're streaming to the Rochester Parkour page. Uh, so instead, I've just been leaving it here, but I still use it every single day, every day, by remoting in with my laptop. And my laptop, like I don't even have, have my laptop plugged in right now, but it's not using the same amount of power that it would be using had I opened up DaVinci Resolve in on my Surface. Instead, I'm accessing it through my PC and using my network to stream it, and then Again, I don't know how well this is going to play. Normally, I can play back videos flawlessly without any stutter, any lag, without any downscaling as long as they're 1080p. If they're 4K, that gets a little wonky. I typically downscale just to make the, the experience a little bit more smooth. However, typically... Okay, so this is a, a 60 frame per second video and it's playing back in real time which is insane. Like I am seeing this on my laptop, I'm seeing it on my computer. There, there's visibly almost no lag, which is unbelievable. The one thing with editing video that you do sort of get, there is a very small delay and it just kind of depends on your network speed and what the latency is. If you have a high latency speed, the audio is a little challenging the audio can get desynced and what you see on the video is a little delayed with your audio and so matching stuff up can be a challenge um, and and making specific edits and cuts for audio based moments in your clip that sometimes doesn't work out so well and you'll need to kind of like render it and then play it back outside the, the video editing software in order to see whether or not it worked. Sometimes that, that gets tricky. Once you kind of understand what your latency is, you can get good at guessing it, or obviously you can use the waveform in the audio timeline to help you understand exactly where things are and, and what needs to happen and everything else. This is making me super sad that I haven't really been editing video <laughs> because we've been so busy with, with all of our other stuff trying to, to get things up and running. Uh, but yeah, that 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 is how I've been editing videos this entire time. This looks insane, by the way. This is nuts. Uh, how insane. Okay, so I'm going to cancel out. Cool. And then we're gonna go back over here. <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> Bring you back. And then let's see. I'm gonna turn off my display video capture device. Let's transform you, fit the screen, transition over. Yay! Cool. All right. So. That, that is essentially how I've been editing video this entire time. Oops. Yeah, get that box out of here. That's how I've been editing video this, this whole time for the last two years. There is no reason, there's no reason for you to spend a buttload of money on a gaming laptop, even for gaming. 
which is to say my my wife and I have been uh, because I, I, I was able to invest in this PC we've got two PCs in our household we've got an old one we've got this new one that we've been using um, we've been playing a lot of Elder Scrolls online for instance and it's it's like playing Skyrim but but together cooperative it's kind of fun and I can literally play with her on my surface because again I've been leaving my PC here but I can play as if my PC were right next to me there is a, a very like obviously this might not work for fast twitch gaming that's probably not that's going to be a frustrating experience because the, the, the Twitch and the, the latency is a huge factor in those games. For games that don't require a ton of latency, this is perfect for it. You can still play remotely and, and I mean, God, it's, it's incredible. It blows my mind. It, it's I, incredible. This is like, this is the future, <laughs> right? So yeah. Uh, if you've got any other questions on exactly how that functions, I can go through and help you answer. Um, again, this PC is not a super high-end PC. I bought it and, and designed it specifically for video editing and not necessarily gaming, but that doesn't mean that you can't do other stuff with it um, or, or upgrade it if you have the budget to allow for it. Again, this is a Ryzen 7 2700X. The video card is is not crazy. It's a 1050 Ti, and I, I think I only put it's only got 16 gigs of memory. I, I skimped on a few things just to save a little bit of cost uh, when we decided. It. Originally, I was just going to upgrade the old PC, and it was going to be significantly cheaper. We sort of weighed the costs and benefits of of whether or not we should spend just a little bit extra to have two PCs, and now we have two PCs. I, I purchased a, a tower and a power supply and, and everything else in order to, to make it one cohesive unit and, and that's how it's been working. So yeah, don't buy gaming laptops. Once your laptop dies, you typically can't do anything for it. However, this one, because it's a PC, you are, it's infinitely configurable. You can always go in, spend a little bit of money, change things out, change things if anything breaks it's just the component that breaks and you can switch out that component for significantly less significantly less that's it that's my piece that's what i wanted to talk about with that in mind there's also a couple other things that i, I wanted to do with today's stream because i mean I, i'm done that's it that's all i wanted to talk about today uh so it's also been a little while since I've gone through comments. Um, I've been, I, I don't wanna say I've been ignoring them, but I kinda have been ignoring comments for a little bit. So I just wanna bring some comments up and maybe uh, just answer some of them on stream. And I, I think there's also been a lot of cool, interesting discussion that's been coming by for a while. I also, because it's, I, I am me and I like to, play around and test things out and do crazy stuff like trying to stream my desktop on stream. Uh, I'm streaming my phone as well right now. Hopefully that still functions. Let's find out. I'm gonna move me this way and then... And I feel like... Oh, my phone stream died so i'm gonna bring it up real quick get everything back up and running so streamlabs has an incredible software not only for the pc it also has an incredible platform for your phone if you've been interested in figuring out new ways to stream or enhance your stream if you're doing fun live streams just with like people that you that you meet or if you're looking to do more stuff on a YouTube channel or Twitch channel or anything else like that Streamlabs OBS does not only exist as a a PC or like desktop client you can also do this on your phone and it has a lot of interesting features for your phone one of which is a remote control if you you go through the process of creating a bunch of settings you do absolutely everything with your phone Cool, David Chow, welcome, welcome, good to have you. Alan Glasswell, 
Good to have you. I've only been looking at YouTube chat, so I should bring up Facebook chat. Thank you for the reminder. It's a good thing that I looked at my phone. Um, one thing that they've added recently is the ability to stream and display capture your phone, which is insane. That's fantastic. So with that in mind, let me just double check real quick. I think I need to stop the stream and bring it back on. And then I'll show you exactly what I did to do that. I'm gonna be streaming uh, 1080p. That's a good frame rate. And let's go for that. And let's get the URL for it so I can show you all. I'm gonna switch over to my display capture. Drop my video device down, transition that over, okay. So, um, I'm going to get my, I'm adding a scene, I'm gonna add a media source, because it is a media source. I'm gonna call it, oh, I might need to drop my phone first though. All right, let's do this again, I'm adding a source. Phone. This is not a local file. You could play local files if you wanted to play back just random video footage on stream. You can do that through here. But instead, I'm going to have it not be a local file. And this is an HTTP stream. This is one. You need, uh, basically, what it's doing is turning your phone into a device that you can listen into through port 9060. Uh, it's creating a different version of the stream, that's why the number changed somehow. And what I'm looking for is, uh, no, V, uh, MP4. And let's see what happens. Sometimes the latency is super high and so it doesn't necessarily show up immediately. Functioning. Of course it's not functioning, Alda, that's come on. Well, shucks. Leave it to me to have something working before I go live, and then I go live and then it breaks. Huh. Let's see, what can I do here? I'm gonna back out and just start everything over again. Try again. Stop the stream. I'm going to close the program. And open the program again. Streamlabs OBS. Switched it back to one. So let's try this again. Media source, add source. From my phone. One six eight dot one dot eight ninety sixty and switched it back. Yo, what's up? Apex Apex Throckmorton. Thank you for liking my stream. And it switched back to one. Uh, B.mp. Play! Do it! Bring it up. Interesting. And. What a shame. Typically when this happens, typically when this happens, I have to restart Streamlabs OBS. But I can't do that because I'm streaming right now. So that's unfortunate. I'm gonna try one more time with the FLV. Hmm. 
I'm gonna double check, bring up the DLC real quick. Let's see if it shows up on the network stream. Not five, it's switched back to one. Hey, see, so something unfortunately happened. Something unfortunately happened on Streamlabs OBS that made this break. Because this is my phone. And you know, scroll through. The latency is pretty bad, but it's I know it says that. Oh, technically, I'm looking at the MP4 stream. Let's switch that over to FLV. Interesting. The FLV is broken. All right. Well, instead, something different. Bring up. I'm going to turn you all off just a moment. So that I don't show stuff I don't want to show on stream. Transition. I'm going to need to bring up my comments on an actual browser. Like a plebe! Ugh. Like a Neanderthal! No good. This was working, but it's just not working now. And the, the fix for it, because this is still like a, a kind of a beta version of Streamlabs OBS, the fix for it is to restart Streamlabs. I don't want to restart Streamlabs. I want it to just work, otherwise I'd have to kill my feed. I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm gonna bring everybody up on a window on the computer. And we'll go through this way. Okay. Now I can show you my display. There. I need to add a scene for a window. YouTube comments. There we are. Hooray! Video capture device. And there we are! Cool. Only took a little while to make that function and make that work. Okay, so with that in mind, I want to go through some comments because it's been a little while. I've been ignoring a lot and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm getting to it. I will probably still write replies to all these people. I do my best to reply to all of you in comments. This is just a very strange time in life. So, welcome. Uh, with that said, let's get into it. 50 Century says Rival Series is the best series. I don't know if I agree with that. I think the Rival Series is a great addition to the nerf ecosystem. I think that it is an incredible way to change the gameplay. Before Rival, the only way to dump ammo was to have a ton of magazines and do a ton of mag transitions. Or, if you remember the Hailstorm, <laughs> that was insane. What a, what a crazy blaster. Hailstorm? Is that the one with the revolving mag system? Uh, regardless, that was that was one of the few ways that you could dump ammo. Now, with Rival, you can dump ammo. And that's different. That is interesting. I dig it. I like it. So that's why I think that Rival's great. Is it the best? I don't know about that. Uh, to each their own. Uh, Jake Turner Clarkson says, as an adult, this looks childish. Sure. And yet, I want more than anything to play one of these games right now. Right now or all the time? Hailfire. That's the thing I'm looking for. Hailfire, not Hailstorm. Hail Hailfire. That was an interesting piece of engineering. I'm, I'm sad, almost, that they, they kind of stopped making it. Every so often, I see somebody use it in, in a, like a gameplay video, and it's hilarious. It's amazing. So, yeah. Um... But yeah, I, 
I feel like it's so interesting that people look at what we do, they see that we play with nerf blasters, they instantly think childish. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, they don't get it. But it is massively fun and everybody should play, so absolutely. Zombie Hunter 110 man, pretty noise. Yeah. Noise. Definitely. Hey look! Nightwing nerf nerf works. Tasty tasty knowledge. That was some tasty tasty knowledge. Again, if you want to learn more about how the actual encoding process works and why it's not as easy as the world makes you think it is, watch last week's stream. I go over all of it in, in as best of, of like detail, but not going too much detail as I can. You'll learn a lot from it. Take that in. Ben Anderson says, blasters are childish, and that is why we should not try to be airsoft. Who says we're trying to be airsoft? I'm just, yeah, I'm not trying to be airsoft. But I do think that, that like, there's a reason why our Friday, Friday night nerf is adults only. And it's just more fun that way. Uh, which isn't to say that, that there's not a place for kids in nerf. Like, obviously, most kids start off in their projectile foam sports experience with, with a nerf blaster off the shelf and they run around and have a lot of fun with them. There's still a lot of fun that can be had in a stock battle. It's just, they're, they're two completely different categories. It's just different. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say that blasters are inherently childish. Fangasha says blasters are not childish. It's true. They're not inherently childish. They, it, it's, it's what you make of it. Uh, Motor Monster. Aldos, he needs more subscribers, people. Let's get him there. Yes. Let's. Zymer Tracks, sub to me. Fantastic video. Keep entertaining your fans. Also, can we be friends? No. I have no friends. Also, we can't be friends anymore. Nobody gets to have friends anymore. Except for internet friends. We gotta have internet friends only from now on. Uh, Nerfer Daniel says, what mods did you do to the hammer shot? The hammer shot that I use, uh, all that I did, I removed the air restrictor. I took out the posts just so that the airflow was a little bit better. And then I, I put an Orange Modworks upgrade spring in it. That's it. I love my hammer shot. I love my hammer shot. It's so amazing. I love it so much. I don't know if I could ever go to a battle without a hammer shot. However, GDAP26 is attempting to get me to not do that by, by getting me all, all hyped up about his new pistol blaster that I don't think he's even officially named yet. But hopefully soon that will be in my hands. Hopefully soon we'll be able to also use it in the arena when we're, we're back, up and, back up and running. Ben Anderson says, playing with blasters is childish in my opinion. That's what makes it so fun. If I wanted Milsim, I'd play Airsoft. I think that's one opinion and that's fine. Yeah, if that's if that's how you view it. Um, each their own, each their own. Brad Jones says, Dartsoft is the way to go. I feel like Ben Anderson's gonna have a problem with that. <laughs> We're gonna have to bleep that out. Soft is the way to go. Nerf for Daniel, what do you use to carry extra half dart magazines? I've got a tack vest that my wife got me for my birthday. Uh, it's also my my base. It's my live stream rig. I have my <laughs> most of what I use on my tack vest is not for Nerf. It's to make the live stream function. I've got my encoder box on my back with a. There's so many cables. There's okay. So I've got my encoder box on my back with an HDMI cable that is hooked up to my uh, my camera, which is, which is always on the right side of my head, this way. That has a, also my camera is powered to a USB charger block that I have in one of my magazine holsters on my left side. My encoder is being charged wirelessly by a DC, 12 volt charger, just a battery pack that I hold on my, my, my right chest here, 
with a cable that goes around on that way and then everything else that that's my that's my live stream setup it's more cable and encoder and camera than any nerf stuff on my belt though i've got um i've got a universal pistol holder i can put a chronos in it if i want to normally it's holding my my hammer shot i've got two dump pouches that i use whether or not if i if i'm not running my spring thunder i'll have rival in one i'll have darts in another if i am running my spring thunder i'll put usable loaded shells in one and i'll collect the empty shells and put them in another dump pouch so i know always when i'm, I'm loading to and from it <laughs> AIA Ar Artemis says, foam tag. Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, yeah, okay. I can get behind that. I just don't like blaster tag. Blaster tag sounds weird. But, yeah, we did that whole thing. I'm not going back to it. I'm over it. Uh, but that's my setup. That's my setup. It's, it's really not that much. I've got a couple of extra magazine holders for half dart mags. In normal game, I'm running two mags. I don't, I, I'm not huge on dumping ammo, and I, I mean, you know me, I'm, I'm also getting sent back to the respawn quite a lot, quite frequently, and so I have a decent amount of time to, to reload on the fly as I go. Travis Shea says, you hear about the new Tagger dart leak? No. What is that? Tell me. Tagger dart. Let's find out. Nerf dart tag 30 tagger micro darts, is that what you're talking about? That can't be it. No. This is old. Tagger micro darts. Nope. Tell me. Yeah, all I'm finding is old stuff. What uh what do you mean by that, Travis? Can you post links in this? Brace the ammo dump. <laughs> Embrace the ammo dump. Definitely with uh, with Artemis's new new chaos, the the Kraber, his he he 3D printed his own version of a chaos, but it's bullpup. Oh my god, it's so insane. That thing can dump ammo, dump ammo. I it just it you'd have to spend so much time loading it. Ben Anderson says dart with Velcro on the tip that Hasbro recently filed a patent patent for. Wait 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 wait. I thought they had these a long time ago. What do you mean they just recently filed a patent for? Nerf subreddit. Okay, let's bring let's bring the display capture back then. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna bring this down. Transition you over. The Nerf subreddit you said? Oops. Tiger Dart, where are you? Dart Patent. Oh. Okay. So it's not, it's okay. So this is different from what they were doing before because the, the, the design is actually different. The the old Tagger darts had like the, the giant massive rubber head and so they they obviously wouldn't work out of most barrels. This look like this looks like it might actually function significantly better. Oop, excuse me. Interesting. Huh. So now, does that mean that all of our, our tack vests and tack gear and, and when we play, we'll have to just be super Velcroed out? <laughs> In order for these stories. I wonder how much better these will function than the last, the last iteration. Because I feel like the last iteration, but I mean, granted, we can never really test them at higher velocities. Velcro, I won't say that Velcro's come a long way. However, I do remember there were very few things that you could do with Velcro when I was a kid. And now, like, we literally have some fitness gear in the gym that we use a lot to rig up, like, rings 
and or uh, uh, hanging gear that we can like you, a whole person we can velcro strap it over a bar and it's it's uh, rated to handle like several hundred pounds which is kind of incredible that you can just like velcro it on and swing on it a, an adult can literally like pull and grab on it and yank on it without it breaking which is kind of insane but granted that's like in order for it to hold that much weight you need basically like a foot of of linear tape with a two inch width in order for it to function like that this is significantly less velcro so i i just wonder how much it would stick but it is intriguing how interesting yeah i had not heard about this Yeah, I hadn't heard about that. That's that's pretty cool. I dig that. I'm all I'm all for I'm all for newness. I'm all for interesting interesting things that just kind of are creative, allow us to to kind of take it and play the the game a different way. Elite compatible, yeah, super cool. I think yeah, came out of nowhere. I didn't even hear about that. Actually, when when did that When was this post? 2 days ago. Yeah. I wonder what the weight distribution will be like on on these new darts with the Velcro tip. I guess we're gonna see a lot more. We're gonna see a lot more Velcro come into play <laughs> on on tack vests and everything else. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for letting me know. Ben Anderson says heard about it a few months ago. Cool. You put oh Artemis says I posted it on the Discord a few months back when they had like zero info on them. Okay, so this has been out there for a little while. Interesting. Cool. All right. Uh, let's go back to some comments real quick. Just turning this into a comment show. Oh. Hope that's all right. Uh, Jonathan YT, is that also a parkour gym? It looks like one. Yes, we are a parkour gym. Um, I, I don't know if, if what we do could ever truly function as a standalone nerf business. And I'd love for, for somebody to prove me wrong. What I would hate, what, what I imagine a nerf only business would eventually get turned into is just a party venue which has its place in life but it's kind of soul sucking i uh i reached out actually i i, I spoke to connor from uh from detroit dart talk as well as uh justin from the rochester foam dart league and I'm trying to, I, ha, I got busy and I haven't been able to coordinate between them to get a time where we can all come in and do a fun stream specifically on how this shutdown has affected nerf businesses. I, I thought it was a cool idea though because we've got three completely different business models. We've got our business model, we've got Justin and the RFDL's business model, and we've got Connor's. Uh, but. I, yeah, I, I would love to do what we have here specifically just like if we were to, to start another business to just have it be a nerf thing. I just don't know if that could ever pay the bills <laughs> um, because the money maker in that market is birthday parties. It's like it, it keeps it keeps the bills paid, uh, but it's just not the same. It's not the same as, as what we do on Fridays, and, and it's fun to do that on Fridays. Uh, I, I just don't know if that could function any time other than like a two hour time block once a week. So, I don't know. Uh, da, 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 da. Ben Anderson, yep, most indoor arenas just do birthday parties for preteens. Only way to pay the bills. Yeah. Uh, I think it, it's so having it be a, a um it's i consider it like a, an arm 
of the parkour gym. It is a, a revenue stream that a lot of other parkour gyms aren't accessing, and I don't really know why. And even when they do, they treat it just as the the birthday party gimmick. And I, I think it's so it's such a shame because I know and I'm in contact with so many other parkour gyms. And for instance, one of the reasons why we started doing Friday Night Nerf is because none of our Friday night classes ever could gain traction because Friday night is kind of like the start of the weekend and we would always compete with weekend type activities. And it was like, in, in, instead of trying to compete with venues, let's just make a venue and let's, let's just like go about doing our own thing. And that's, that's when the, the nerf nights were created. We said, let's get together. Let's, if we're, if we're not going to be open, we might as well try to do something with that time block to make a little bit of money back. And that's when nerf night started. And so we, we started doing it two hours on a Friday. Uh, it's 10 bucks to join and like, it, it makes a lot of sense. Otherwise we would literally just be closed and like, sure, we're not running the heat during that two hour time block and, and we're not paying payroll wages for that two hour time block, but it still is something. And uh, at this point, because we, I mean, we recently, up until the shutdown, we had like a consistent stream of 20 people that would show up on a Friday night. It's a decent amount of revenue. It, it's nowhere near what parkour brings in, but it's something, you know? And uh, it, it helps make it worth it, and it helps sustain it enough so that we can continue providing ammo for people, we can continue offering it, and, and uh, it is an extra line item on our insurance. It's not like, like if you're gonna be in business offering movement-based services, you, you need insurance, right? Um, and it's not necessarily cheap. Uh, but so we, we have to charge in order to pay back that in order to pay back the utilities, but like it's worth it. And so I just don't know why so many other parkour gyms resist the, the temptation or the urge to do it because like it, it's, it's so fun and you can literally grow a completely separate community through doing it and not just kids. We've got quite a community of adults that come out each and every week and play. So. I wish that more of my parkour colleagues would go out and do that for you all so that you all that live near a parkour gym but not near our parkour gym can have access to stuff like this. Lightning Eagle 14, welcome to the stream. Good to have you. We're, uh, you missed the first part, but we're, we're kind of just turning this into a comment, uh, comment stream. It's been a while since I've gone through comments, uh, so we're just going through and answering a bunch of them. And using that to jumpstart Communication and conversation. Uh, this is one. Ow, oh, Nate. Okay, so I must have missed this. I feel like I'm going to skip this comment uh, just because this relates to a whole different topic that I don't want to get into. That's the only reason why I don't want to do it, but I will answer you. I will answer you. I'm so sorry that I have not replied to comments in a little while. Nerf for Daniel. Do you like your K26 Chrono so much that you would put a K26 in all of your rival Springers? The Chronos is an extremely well-designed blaster, which is to say a K26 is not a universal game changer for all blasters. And there are very real reasons why you might not use a K26 or why you might downgrade to a K25. I actually hear a lot of good things about using K25 springs in Kronos Blasters rather than the K26. It makes it slightly easier to prime while keeping about the same FPS velocity. So, uh, I mean, technically a K26 and a K25, they're sort of the same thing, so yeah. Uh, you really have to have to determine whether or not your internals are able to handle it over a long period of time. With a Kronos, the thing is so well designed, the internals are so well designed that a K26 is perfectly fine. I popped one in almost the day that I got my Kronos blasters, 
and the the exact same k26 is in there to this day and i have only busted one of my chronoses and it was because i was being frustrated and broke the prime of it the internals are perfectly fine though uh it's it's actually the sled broke off and the the little screw port broke off so now i i can't function one of my chronos blasters um however for instance my sentinel i originally started off my sentinel modification by putting a k26 in it and that instantly upgraded it to 130 feet per second however every single plunger rod would break after about 100 shots and the reason why is just because the internals are so poorly designed and functioned uh or functioning that the the tail end where the catch is would just pry apart because there was too much pressure from the compression of the k26 to hold it in the prime position for too long so I actually just switched over. I changed out my breech design and I switched over to the stock spring. And now my blaster fires somewhere around 120 feet per second. It's roughly the same with, with not a K26 and it, it works out pretty well. So there are reasons why you might not choose a K26. The only other thing that I would say, uh, I did switch one of our loner Hades blasters from the stock spring to a K26 and it is significantly harder to prime and it is way more erratic than the other stock Hades. So there are reasons why you might decide, I don't want my blaster to be super erratic and I want the prime to be a little bit easier. You just kind of, kind of, you gotta weigh the pros and cons or just pop one in. They're cheap enough that you can just pop one in and see if you like it and play test it a little bit. Motor Monster, is there any other people who upload this kind of stuff? Are you freaking kidding me? There are so many people. There are so many people. I don't know if I could list them all. You know what? Actually, I wonder. Um, I'm going to open up. I don't know anymore if my channel works this way. Yes, okay, so I am subscribed to quite a few creator channels. If you go to my channel page and right to the right of the community tab, if you click channels, I'm just gonna double check. I'm gonna bring you all over this way, transition that over. Cool. I'm sorry, I just realized comments were not up that entire time, but you know, whatever, I'm saying it anyway. Uh, if you go to the right of the community tab and say channels, these are all of the channels that I've subscribed to over the course of the years. There are probably some that I, I've still missed out on and, and specific, probably mostly because I'm not doing the weekly nerf or roundup anymore. But there's a lot of creators on here, a lot of which do gameplay content on a relatively regular basis, although not typically now. For instance, uh, Newport Nerfer 113 just published a gameplay video. Um, so all of these people, there's so many creators. You could just literally go through here, click each one, see if they have any gameplay and see if there's there's anything that you know you, you might like. So yeah, feel free. Oh, man, the list just keeps going. <laughs> So, yeah, a lot of, lot of channels. There are a lot of channels out there that, that do fun stuff. Go all over. Cool. Uh, Lightning of 14, what are your thoughts on the Comrade Breach? Oh, dude. It works, it works. If if you don't, so I machined my Sentinel Breach out of aluminum, only because I, I had access to a lathe and I wanted to learn. It was, a, it was a fun project, an easy enough project to turn some metal, learn, 
how to machine something. So I did. And it was actually pretty fun. It was pretty fun to, to learn. I have access to a makerspace here in Rochester. It's called the Rochester Makerspace. You should look up if you have access to a makerspace. If you've ever said, I would love to play around with a 3D printer, but I don't want to invest in one yet, or I don't want to own one and have to upkeep it constantly yet, your local makerspace, if you have one, likely has 3D printers that you can like you can join the makerspace for us. We pay $40 a month to have access to this and it is so so worth it. It's so worth it. We have it the we have it expensed to the gym because the gym does all of its building projects through there. Instead of having to schedule our building projects with the gym for all of our, our woodworking stuff that we do, we make all of the, the obstacles and everything that you see here. Instead of doing that here, making a lot of noise, making a lot of dust, having it be dangerous, and also having to work around our class schedule, because our class schedule has gotten pretty full recently, we have uh, we've contracted out the makerspace. We have a $40 a month membership that gets us access to a 1,000 square foot wood shop with a filtration system, with a, a sawzall stop saw, so that if you, you shouldn't do this, but if you were to like touch the blade, it would instantly weld itself shut, um, which is amazing. And then obviously you have to pay to repair the machine, but a new blade and a new braking system for those things are now down to like a couple hundred dollars. And your finger is way worth a couple hundred dollars, way more. Um, You've got access to band saws. You've got access to CNC machines. They have an army of 3D printers. They've got like eight or they might even have a dozen 3D printers now uh, at, at the makerspace. You have to buy your own filament. But other than that, they've got the computers and the machining that you can do to work with it. They have an 800 square foot machine shop with a bridge port lathe. If you don't know what that is, it's a it's a X, Y, and Z axis like manufacturer grade uh, machining mill. It is so incredible. And it's a nonprofit, so all of their classes are free. You just have to be a member and then they teach you how to use all this stuff. Um, I got simple instruction on how to use a lathe and I went through the process of making it. You could just as easily nowadays design your own 3D printed breach if, if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, the Comrade Breach is there if if you're just looking to like use all of the use products and things that you have probably in your closet or your basement, and it does function very well. It's just janky, which is fine because us nerfers pretty janky. We do things pretty janky. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's go through. Uh, NorCal Nerf Club says, have you tried using a retaliator spring in your Sentinel? No. That's a good idea. I could definitely try a retaliator spring. Um, I don't know... It's been a while since I've looked at a retaliator spring, so I don't actually know what, uh, what the length is on that and whether or not they are similar. Do you know for a fact that the retaliator spring is similar? Or are you just suggesting it? Um, regardless, I will definitely go home and see if that's a possibility. Because I, I also know that I have a slightly beefier... I think I have an 8 kilogram retaliator spring or a 6 kilogram retaliator spring. Which is just a little bit beefier. It's like not crazy like a K26. It's just slightly beefier. I would be interested in seeing what that does to the Sentinel. And whether or not that would put stress on the plunger. I'm nervous to do a lot of new changes to the Sentinel because I am quite literally on the last plunger, uh, on the last plunger rod. And I've broken all the others. I've purchased a dozen Sentinels in the past and I've broken all of them. <laughs> I've broken all of them. So yeah. 
Um, the average nerfer 09, how can I make an FPS video? I assume what you're saying is a first person video? Like, uh, like, like, like showing somebody what you're, like, are you saying a, a VOD, like a video on demand, how I normally do it? Um, okay, real quick. You get a camera, right? Boom, you get an SD card, yes? You hit the record button, you move around, you shoot people with a Nerf blaster. Then, you pause the recording or you stop the recording. You take the SD card, you put it in a computer capable enough to edit video. If you don't have a computer capable enough of editing video, Rewind this all back, watch from the beginning, and see how I built a PC specifically for video editing and how I am able to stream it to a laptop and edit video remotely without having to physically be next to my PC. And then you can edit. Uh, I edit with a free program called DaVinci Resolve. So feel free to do that. Travis J, any upcoming blaster leaks you're excited about particularly? I, okay, the the new Ultra Sniper, I think would be, man, it, what a weird, what a weird blaster. Um, I am still horribly against the Ultra line, but I'm still, I'm still intrigued to see what Hasbro does with it because despite me hating the dart and despite me hating the the idea behind the dart it is still interesting it's it, they're 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 at least attempting to innovate and i give them props for attempting to innovate and so having it always be a flywheel system functioning before. I was interested to see what they would do with Springers. They've clearly created a Springer. I'm interested to see what happens with that. Will I buy one? No, probably not. But I am really excited to see what happens with it. I'm also really excited to see, um, I, I want I want for the world to get back to normal so that the, the Havoc Prime can get out there. Um, I've got mine up right over this way. I'm so excited to, to get the, the Havoc Prime back out there and running. Um, I don't know what changes my, my rep at Velocity Outdoor has done, but I'm really excited to, to see more people with CETAs in their hand and to see what, what stuff like this does to the Nerf ecosystem, because I, th I think it's I think it's such an interesting thing to have an airsoft company pivot and say airsoft might be capped out, and we are interested in in servicing and bringing in the the adult hobbyist nerfer. I think that that is so cool. I think that, that is a great thing for our community, and I'm really excited to see what happens with it. So I want for all of this to go back to normal <laughs> and, and to see what happens and to get back to progress again. So that'll be interesting. Uh, Nerkal Nerf Club says nine or 12 kilogram would do you very good, same length and diameter. Dang, okay. I feel like the one that I have in my old, old Sonic Ice Retaliator is a nine kilogram spring. So I will definitely pop that in the Sentinel and see what, what happens with it. That would be that would be exciting. That would be interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. Maybe you should machine a plunger too, Lightning Eagle 14 says. I was working on that, actually. I, um, it's, it's challenging to, so the, the biggest issue with machining is efficiency and trying to find something that's efficient and the the best thing that i've come up with right now is having two uh two separate work pieces where i have a uh like the plunger head would be one piece and i'd have to machine that i'd have to drill a hole through it so that i can uh have a second piece that would be the the plunger rod and that would get screwed into it 
Uh, and then obviously I would, I would need to pad the front of it because it would be aluminum. I would need to figure out how to have the right sizing channel on the larger plunger head for the, um, for the O-ring. It's not necessarily challenging. Uh, it's just something that I haven't really, really, I haven't really messed with. And it's also a challenge to get it to work with the stock catch because the stock catch and that whole assembly piece where the the sheath for if you've never opened up a sentinel before the stock uh the actual sheath for the spring rest um is pushed forward because the entire plunger tube assembly moves and shifts with the lever action so the spring is all the way up here and then on the back you have this plastic part where the rod actually like moves through and the catch is back this way you need something with a small enough outside diameter that it can easily fit through that stock part but also engage and activate the catch but also be easily you know activated and disengage the catch so it's not necessarily as easy as i would hope it would be i also played around with my uh my my roommate from college is actually like a he is a self-employed engineering consultant who specializes in prototyping with 3D printing. And so he actually did a lot of 3D prints for me back in the day with the Sentinel. A plunger was one of them. And the plunger worked okay. It still needs a little bit of reworking. And I think that was the only reason why I didn't really follow through that much with it is because... Um, I started working on the breach system and then I, I just kind of... I abandoned it. It was an abandoned project, so whatever. Uh, but yeah, I, I, could, I should probably spend some time getting back into that. I would love to rework my Sentinel a little bit and make it a little bit more future-proof because the stock parts are definitely seeing their wear and tear from all the, the years of abuse that I've put on it. Uh, Lighting of 14, if you're me, you use your phone strapped to your head. That's correct, you do not need a camera to take first person view footage, you can absolutely just run around with a phone on your camera, uh, a, a phone as your camera strapped to your head. Is it awkward? Yes, but we all make our sacrifices for the community and our nerf channels. <laughs> so we do what we need to do. Nerf Club, Nerf Club, waiting for my Habit Prime to ship. I still am amazed that you found that. Uh, I, I have not gotten word from my contact whether or not that was like something that they meant to do. Like if if they're using third party sellers to buy and sell their, their, their product because also as far as I'm concerned, they have not gotten in their like main shipment yet. Uh, and again, this is all like all of the machining process for all the stuff. It, it, it comes through China and people would have needed to get in order to get stuff on the market. Now they would have had to have all of their orders in probably by this time last year. And then all of the major manufacturing went through and then it gets distributed and then sent to retail stores and people can buy them. Now, uh, this is just the, the product life cycle. I bet when they put in their order, when Velocity Outdoor put in their order, it was probably pretty near when the the whole thing that shall not be said on YouTube started to hit and China started to close down all of its, its uh, manufacturing. And now they're starting to like ramp back up production. And so people are gonna get all their stuff in, in waves. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. I don't know when they'll be in retail stores, but I, I do know that they're attempting to get them in retail stores. We'll see. So you won't have to order them online. You could literally just go to, I don't know if, if I don't know who they're, they're working with, but they want you to be able to just walk into a store like you normally buy a Nerf Blaster and buy a Havoc Prime. That's their goal. Travis Shea, what do you hope Elite 2.0 will be? Personal theory or hyper? Elite 2.0. I assume you're talking about the, the the tiger darts. I don't really know. Um, Elite 
I still feel if if this is going the direction that you're thinking, um, having having more blasters available that out of the box operate with half length darts. That is the next. That's like the the next frontier I see for the 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 nerf ecosystem because half link darts are so well established in the hobbyist community as a a better alternative an easier to manage alternative a better performing alternative to full length darts having more options without the requirement of modifying your blasters now don't get me wrong people are always going to modify their blasters but having something like this that somebody who's not necessarily in the nerf culture in the nerf hobby being able to just go out and buy also maybe even being able to go out and buy from a retail store half length darts and be able to use them at a community gathering or a nerf war man that would be such an amazing world and I feel like that would draw so many new people into the hobby, having something that is competitive right off the bat. That would be so great. And that's kind of why I'm excited for an airsoft company to be getting their, their gaze on us and starting to realize, just like Dart Zone realized, oh, we should make stuff for the hobbyists. Let's try it. And then like, it was a massive success. The Dart Zone Pro, was a massive success. I am so excited to see what they come up with down the pipeline, specifically operating in that pro genre for us hobbyists. So, I don't know. Um, Nerf Call Nerf Club, I'll let you know when I get it. I'm thinking I'll have a wait. You'll probably have a wait. Yeah, but it'll be worth it, dude. It'll be it'll so be worth it. It's such, it's such a great blaster. Um, it does have a little quirks, but nothing nothing that uh, a little bit of modern creativity can't can't fix and can't solve. Back to comments, because again, I've, I've been avoiding comments for so long. Johanzo, foam projectile sports. That's a that's a category, I think. I don't consider foam projectile sports a name. Like I said, I'm not I'm not inherently for Dartsoft. I just think that blaster tag doesn't intrigue me. And I don't know how to identify as a blaster tagger. That seems weird. It doesn't seem it doesn't seem like a complete system yet. And that's the only reason why I'm drawn more to the, the the Dart Soft name. But that's neither here nor there. I'm, I'm not bringing up the Dart Soft debate again. That's just my feeling on it. Foam projectile sports. Uh, however, you guys are awesome. Thanks. We are awesome. <laughs> MD Lassel says, what's the, or asks, what's that grip that you're running on your Percy's that looks sick? It's literally a worker foregrip. It's designed to work on Picatinny, but if you want it to function on a rival rail as I did, just put some tape, just put some tape on the inside of it to like pressure it together. That's all that I did. And it, it, it worked actually pretty well. I could like hold it with the foregrip, and I mean, it, it, if you didn't have the tape on there, it would kind of like loosen itself off. You could kind of pry it off too too much. But yeah, with, with just a little bit of tape, mm, the pressure was actually pretty well functioning. So yeah. <laughs> NorCal Nerf Club, I'm cutting down Z-tips now. I, um, I need to order, shoot, who was it? Uh, Actually, you know what? I've been I've been work uh, I've been meaning to get back into. I before all of this nonsense hit, I was working on a Stampede rewire. It functions 
but it it doesn't function at the same time because I, I was trying to operate it with the original um, breach system, the stock breach system, and that, that can't function on a 3S at least. The, the assembly tries to retract too fast and what ends up happening is the dart stop that like allows the breach to sleeve over a dart and then obviously when the plunger goes all the way forward, it engages the system, the dart stop opens up, the dart fires. What ends up happening is that the plunger retracts too quickly and the dart stop clips the dart tail as, it, as it's exiting the barrel and ruins the trajectory. So I will need a complete breach system. Uh, Captain Xavier just posted a half dart breach that was posted up on Etsy, I think. Dude, Cybrin, you're amazing. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I don't have a witty comment. Just take my money. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Actually, that brings up a, another topic that I want to talk about real quick um, after I finish this talk. Uh, with all of this said, actually, why did that not pop in through alerts? Is that because... Is this a super chat? Is that what happened? Did it go through as a super chat? There should be a Streamlabs alert. Yeah, you did it as a super chat. Okay, well, I appreciate it anyway. I'm sorry I can't post that on my alerts page. Have that come up on stream. Why aren't you functioning? Do it. Repeat alert. Interesting. Do I need to have that on top? Position. Now let's try. Huh. Man. Streamlabs. How odd. My alert box, for whatever reason, does not want to pull in super chats. So it must not function or communicate in that way. <laughs> I'm lazy and use super chats. I'll see if I can. No, 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 it's fine. You could still send. You could still send super chats. I'm just sad that it, this is only going to show up on YouTube. I have it because I'm using Streamlabs. I have an alert box. Like for instance, I can replay that Orky the cute husky <laughs> has subscribed. But he did that four hours ago, right? So, so we weren't streaming four hours ago. But your super chat is supposed to pull up on that alert box. And I should be able to repeat the alert and play it, but it, it I guess it just doesn't it doesn't communicate with Streamlabs in that way. So that's interesting. I didn't know that, but I appreciate it no matter what. Uh, <laughs> is that my social distancing shirt? <laughs> Get away from me! Stand six feet away from me! Don't stand so close to me. No, this is my uh, this is my Charlie shirt. My my name's my name's Charlie. Oh, I ruined it. My name's Charlie. Uh, but this is my Charlie shirt that my wife got me as a wedding present or an anniversary present. I can't remember. Uh, but if you are a fan of, if you are a fan of a show called It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Charlie wears this shirt in in one of the like the earlier seasons, and I just thought it was fun because. I live and grew up right next to the Adirondack region, so she found this shirt for me. <laughs> How nice. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, by the way, Nerf, Nerf Builder. Uh, however, uh, just to finish my thought, um, the, the, got, the, the mod kit that Captain Xavier uh, highlighted in that video is a 3D printed breach kit. Which again, there's so much awesome stuff that's being done, that's being done in the 3D space for us nerfers. And as long as you are able to like really get your tolerances right, you can make make 3D printed breaches. You don't need to machine them. 
Uh, they don't need to be injection molded. You can 3D print them and they work remarkably well. The, the kit does break your ability to to go back to the original system so it, that is what it is um, i'm going to try to find um i'm going to try to find what uh let's see i'm going to bring i'm going to bring us all back i'm going to try to find that video Because the guy that he highlighted has an Etsy store that has one of the, the best Stefan Dart cutters that I've seen. There it is. And then easy, that was it. This dude has a, a couple pretty interesting things on on his Etsy page, but one of them is this. This is so cool. You don't even need to take your darts out of the plastic. Put the whole plastic unit in this and then cut them. And then his his uh, Type C um, version that's that's this one over here is set up so that you can cut the other part of your foam so that they, it is the correct length for when your foam, the original foam that your, your dart head is glued to, when that dies and your dart head pops off, you can re-glue them on new foam pieces. That's awesome. What a cool idea. I love that. I need to order one of these and start getting out to, to cutting more half darts so that we have a bountiful amount of half darts ready and available when we uh, when we come back and we are playing Nerf again. So, yeah. Um, but with that said, uh, let's bring myself back. Bring YouTube comments back. Uh, with that said, the... Um, oh, AIA Artemis says, Aldas SLA printers also work well for breaches. What is the difference between an SLA printer and a PLA printer? If if there is a, like, do you need a separate printer specifically for SLA? Or I assume that they, they probably make printers that, that do both, but yeah, um, that would be, that would be nice to know. Uh, regardless, regardless, something that I wanted to discuss and bring up just because, uh, money became a thing. Um, I was given access, uh, I was given access to a YouTube membership page. What does that mean? Basically, it means that YouTube has a system that operates very similar to Patreon. Patreon is a very wonderful service that really got its start and a huge boom after one of the earlier adpocalypses on YouTube when it basically broke anybody that did animation. Animation is super time intensive. It takes you significantly longer to post videos, just like Nerf gameplay videos takes significantly longer. It would be a huge operation and a huge task for me to do a video a day. However, YouTube's algorithm is very well designed for people that post vlog type videos. This is a vlog type video, sort of. Uh, this is technically a talking head video, but like, these videos are easy to produce. And I say that having like, I, it took me a lot of time and effort to understand live streaming and able to, to be able to do this and everything else like that. Regardless, the, this, like all I do, I sit here, I'm talking and it's gonna be a, like a two hour long stream essentially, which is the, the normal stream. That, it is what it is, and then people can watch it afterward, and I'm literally producing it by, you know, posting windows on, on stream and changing it. I don't have to edit this afterward. Even if I did have to edit it afterward, it was so easy to make a talking head video 10 minutes. It is really hard to edit a 10 minute gameplay video, and so you can't put those out all the time. And so basically what that means is that when you're not uploading videos, you're not generating new views, you're, you're not generating 
ad revenue from ads and you're not making as much money as another person on YouTube who is posting daily. That just is what it is. And so what, what happened was uh, Patreon became a service that nowadays, like anybody can be on Patreon. Ben Anderson is on Patreon, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, um, who has a podcast. And the, it, a lot of what he does is supported through that Patreon. And you can go in and say, I, as a person, I understand that what you do is valuable. I understand that you don't get a lot of funding and support from the service that you are posting on, whether like he does podcasts, probably significantly harder to get ad revenue and uh, promotions through a podcast system. Whereas here, just like, you know, ads just roll in through, but Especially in times like this, like my ad revenue has gone from, I think my, my CPM went from like $8. I think it's down to $2 right now. Everybody is hurting from, from this because people just aren't, they aren't, they aren't posting ads on YouTube anymore because what are they going to promote if they, if they were a service-based business? They're not going to waste money on advertising a service that they can't do right now because everybody's on shutdown. Um, so with that said, you as a person pay a little bit of money per month because you want to support a creator. And then that money is so much more valuable to the creator than ad revenue will ever be. YouTube has an in-house service for this. You've probably seen it before on a, a regular YouTube page when you go through um, I'm going to take comments out just because um, you, you might go through and you'll see the little subscribe button right next to it is a blue button that says join. I've been going back and forth on whether or not I'm going to include this on my page. One of the downsides to doing it through YouTube is that YouTube takes 30% where I think Patreon only takes 5%. Um, which is insane. Like, wow, YouTube, you are, you are money hungry, but I mean, it, it's right there. It's a join button, whatever. Um, regardless, they, they try to get you to do all these things by like, oh, you should be, you should have tiers and you should have a, a, a tier where people just get like badges. And then you should have a tier where you make specific videos for people. And then you should have a tier where people get other stuff. I hate that. I hate it a little bit. Um, because I truly and wholeheartedly believe that what I do, like I would do this regardless of getting money for it. With that said, when people like champions, like cyber and warrior 22 out of the kindness of their heart, donate $20. That is immensely helpful because this is such an expensive hobby for me. <laughs> Um, and then last week, uh, AI Artemis donated $150, which is like, blah, 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 blah. I still like can't even fathom it. Um, but when that comes through, it is so insanely helpful as, as a, a, a creator in a hobby, I, I am tempted to go out there and buy blasters to support other nerf creators um like the spring thunder uh and or just like mod kits or anything else i have to weigh all of those monetary financial decisions while also trying to say what equipment do i need for instance my camera broke last year and through the kindness of everybody's heart, I was able to uh, fundraise enough money. You were able to fundraise enough money that we were able to buy another camera when it broke. Otherwise, the videos wouldn't function. I didn't have any spare cash back then in my life to just outright buy another camera. Um, all of the all of the microphones are are like they cost money. The stream costs money. The services that I use cost money, and so having having those extra bit like it does help would i still do it without it yes because i love it i love tinkering with this stuff i love being able to create a stream 
and and say like let's do something weird and try to stream to you while also streaming to my laptop that's sitting right next to me and encode it with a secondary encoder that's fun for me i love learning about this however it's it makes it easier for the channel to continue to do fun stuff like that when it's not just pulling money from my finances um, and it also means that I get to invest in, in more Nerf stuff, and that's fun as well. It enhances the enjoyment of the stream. So, I've been going back and forth on whether or not to do it. If I do do it, or actually I can just pull you all right here, the six viewers that are watching, um, would it make you upset if I put that join button on the channel? And if I do, I fully and wholeheartedly believe in not including tiers. It's going to be one tier, and the tier, I swear to God, gives you nothing. And I don't mean that to say that I'm ungrateful. I mean that as in, I don't want to create something where there's like, man, like you are only doing it to get this exclusive content or exclusive feature or whatnot, and then trying to make people feel elitist or create a fracture in the community between people that support the channel and people that don't support the channel. There are a lot of reasons why some people can't support the channel, but there's, there's, there's just like, it is what it is. Um, you would still get badges, you would still get shoutouts, as in, like, I appreciate the hell out of all of you that have donated money out of the kindness of your heart over the last couple of years that we've been running the stream. It really does make a difference. Um, so I've been considering going back and forth with that. Uh, I still haven't made the decision yet, but if I do, there's not going to be anything for it. It's, it's, it's literally just going to be, if you... If you are in a position where you want to support the stream, you want to see it progress at a faster rate, and you want it to, to pay a couple dollars a month, that's all it's going to be. So, it's up to you. Um, Jesus Christ, guys! <laughs> Jesus ah! Nerf Club, Nerf Club, you're, you're incredible. <laughs> Nerf Builder! What? <laughs> my wife doesn't want you to spend all the, all the spare money on Nerf? Yeah, my, my wife does not want me to spend all my spare money on Nerf. That is that is correct. Um, you all are a fan... Uh, uh, you're all fantastic. And you're all champions. Um, if, if So if there's something on, my, on the Discord... With, uh, on the Discord, anybody who has ever donated money, you guys all get your special, like, tag as an A-team. Call you the A-team. Jesus Christ! <laughs> ah. Oh my God. What are we gonna do with this money? <laughs> what? What should? Uh, we need to. I. I need to like create some polls and figure out what has come in. <laughs> dollar dollar bills. I need to I need to figure out some like some gifts that I can put on stream like like money or whatnot and, and have fun. Um I love you all so much. You're 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 fabulous. Um <laughs> get the spits of twenties. Uh I'll start dancing. <laughs> uh however yeah, we, we got to figure out what to do with, with, with this money and, and how to, to do it. Break the Aldos. Uh, we need to figure out what to do with the money and, and figure out. Buy groceries? Yeah, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> groceries? Ah, oh, Stuff that helps me survive? No. Stuff that helps me survive. Nerf. Stuff that helps me survive. Nerf. <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard to determine. Um, but with that said, will I buy some groceries with it? I don't know. Uh, I would like to, to do more stuff though. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I would love to use, so like I, there are so many new things that have been 
coming out in the Nerf world that I would love to try on stream, either either by by like uh, doing some sort of promotion with that creator, or for those of them that that can't just send me out product, supporting them, paying them money as well to to get out to get them out there. What was the uh, um, Meeker, the new Meeker blaster, the the new pistol that looks pretty fun. I wanted to to play around with that as well. So there's just a lot of stuff and. Um, yeah, I, uh, it's just been on my mind recently, and I'm just kind of letting you know there might be a, a specific like video on demand. If I decide to do it, there will be a specific video on demand that just kind of explains it further, helping everybody understand what it is, but I'm just going to point it out there right now. You're not going to get anything for it. It's, it's just like it's for you to be an awesome human, help support the stream if you so choose. And I, I don't want there to be any sort of, of like pressure to donate money or feel like you need to make money or uh, to donate money in order to to like be considered a special person because you're all special people. I get I understand that some of you can't can't donate money especially especially now and that's fine. That's fine. Uh, there there's yeah. You are amazing. Oh, with that said, one thing um, that I wanted to talk about as well. This is this is just turned into like a super random mess of a stream. I had an idea, and then it, it just kind of it was over and done with so fast. And uh, I I, I want to bring in some other stuff. Um, I was able to test out using my encoder to encode my camera feed and for the longest time I've been meaning to try to figure out how I can keep a reliable stream up and running. I have figured out I believe the issue with my encoder separate, completely separate from the Wi-Fi issue. For those of you that are not aware, the for the, the longest time I had so many Wi-Fi issues um, and, and what it ended up coming down to was that all of my neighbors were just yelling at each other with the with all of our Wi-Fi networks. And my encoder that I have right now operates on a 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. It is not a 5G encoder. And so what that means is, is that there's less bandwidth available, less channels that are not overlapping. And we've have so many businesses around us that everybody's Wi-Fi networks were just like yelling at each other. So once we figured that out, I was able to do an adult like thing and communicate with my mouth with the other adults <laughs> that operate these businesses, and we all coordinated together. It was so amazing. It renewed my faith in humanity a little bit. And we all coordinated together to make sure that we were not overlapping that much. So now there's there's at least one other, there's one other rogue network that I have not tracked down that is still broadcasting a really high sick, uh, 2.4 gigahertz network on channel six, which is what I am been broadcasting my Wi-Fi out on. And that's what my encoder is accessing. Uh, before it was, there were so many, there was so much overlap. There was so much chatter going on. That was part of the issue. A new issue that I've been having, and the reason why I've only been able to stream at 720p, it's my cable. I'm almost positive. I need I'm, I I need to purchase a new cable. I did not know that there are different standards of HDMI cables, and this is new for me. If you didn't know this, or if you did know this, then you're great. Where were you? But there are different standards for HDMI cables. When I originally purchased all of my cables, I'm gonna find. I'm gonna show you. This is the cable that I normally stream with. And if 
your cable has uh, higher standards on it, it would say so. So this cable is listed as a high speed HDMI cable. And what that should mean is that I'm going to bring back, um, I'm going to bring back my display capture for a moment just so that we can do this on stream. What that should mean Do, 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 do. Versions. A, a high speed, anything that's labeled as a high speed cable should be HDMI 1.3. Should be. Uh, I don't know if there's, if there's any real like restrictions on what they can print on it. Like I, I don't know if if they can get away with calling it a high speed cable just because it's HDMI compared to other stuff. Regardless, if if you use an HDMI 1.0 cable, which a lot of the really cheap ones that you can find on Amazon, that's what they are. Uh, they're they're HDMI 1.0. The max transmission bit rate in gigabits is really low. And when you are trying to stream an uncompressed, or when you're trying to transfer an uncompressed 1080p 60 frame per second HDMI feed from your camera into the encoder, that might get close to maxing out the bandwidth of the cable. Whereas you go up a version and suddenly it is literally twice as much bandwidth. Um, oh, uh, yeah, it's twice as much bandwidth. Um, this cable very, like, might actually be fine, but my adapter that I've been using is definitely not. This adapter, which, uh, cause all the, even, even my, my mirrorless camera that I'm streaming with right now is, uh, uses an H, a micro HDMI, and then that has to, my encoder is a full... HDMI, so I needed a adapter to go from micro to the full HDMI. I believe that this adapter is an HDMI one. And if I attempt to stream 1080p with it, it starts flickering gray. And I, I, I feel like that's a problem with the cable itself. So I'm gonna be, um, I, I found a, Actually, I found a higher classification of cable that I'm going to order and test out and see if it functions. Um, the world just has so many interesting things nowadays. Whoops. I need to go there. Which can I? Oh, uh. Mail to mail, micro HDMI to HDMI. I should have put this in my cart and I did not. But um, what I've been doing recently, uh, I've been using, and I'll need to find it again. I don't think it was this one. Shoot, I'll need to find it. Uh, but they, they make cables now, HDMI cables, with like tension springs in them. I've been using because I, I I run around with this thing, and if the if the the if the cable comes loose, then the feed dies and the stream dies. I've been using uh, tacky putty. I literally will just like wrap this around everything. I'll, I'll wrap this around all of my connections to ensure that the the connection to the cable and my camera don't come apart. And it does like it works okay, but there are definitely some times where it, it doesn't function. Um, but uh, yeah, tacky putty has been has been interesting. But I found a cable that I think is like twenty bucks for like a, a, a two foot long cable, which is more than enough. Um, and and it, it's it's qualified to stream eight K video, so that's definitely going to work for me. But they make them with tension springs now, and it's it claims that it can hold eight 
kilograms of weight. You can like you. I could literally put my camera on it and just like shake it up and down, <laughs> and it and it wouldn't come loose. And I wouldn't. I would be free of the tacky putty. So. I'm excited to, to test out that idea. I know at least with my, with this camera that was functioning originally when we first started streaming our our, uh, our videos out on the Rochester Parkour site because we've been switching to an online class format to to try to convince people to to keep their memberships and support the gym through this really trying time. We were using my encoder, so I didn't have to bring the the, the PC in. And we were having so many issues, and it, like I was using all of the same stuff that I normally would use, right? And that thing says that it is capable of streaming HDMI 1080p 60, but I don't think that my cables were able to actually transmit that. And if I were to switch it down to 720, everything works, and it's just because of the the available bandwidth. Um, and it's not because of my my Wi-Fi. <clears throat> I've ruled that out. It's not the Wi-Fi. I think the the next thing, the next hunch that I have, is the cable. All the cable. All the cable's fault. So that's that's very likely. And we shall see. Maybe maybe on Monday that will come through. Yeah, got to get yourself a 2.1. It is a 2.1 cable that that I'm. I'm looking at this one. It does not have an adapter. It's it's one cable, micro HDMI to HDMI. I'm excited for it because I don't think it existed when I, I purchased all of my adapters before. So we shall see. We shall see. I'm hoping. But what I want to do is stream my camera feed to my computer. My computer will likely be at my house when we're back out and you know, playing. And then I can pull in my camera feed into this Streamlabs OBS and all of these fun things will still work and I can still use my phone as a remote control to change scenes just like I used to do way back when. I'm excited, I'm excited, it's gonna be great. With that said, we are, we are coming up on two hours and uh, I want to go home and eat. But I, I really I really appreciate you all. The next stream is going to be of a fun stream with some guests. I've got uh, I've got Connor from from Detroit Dart Talk, and I've got Justin from the Rochester Foam Dart League. I am really excited to talk with them about Nerf business in general. And, and see how that goes. Question mark, howdy macaronis. Is that a useful comment? You should know better. Go wash that mouth out. With that said, I'm gonna be signing off. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you so much. Uh, uh, Cybern Warrior 22, Narcon Nerf Club, AIA Artemis. I appreciate you. Thank you for, for helping out. With, uh, with with finances during this time. For everybody else, thank you for, for particip participating in the stream. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel as long as you have. And I will see you all next time. Peace, everybody. Bye.